Um, <clears throat> good morning from the Yellow Knolls. As you can tell by the name, these knolls are white and pinkish red colored, uh, not yellow. Anyways, uh, these, are, these are all made of Navajo sandstone, which is an Aeolian deposit, uh, lower Jurassic and upper uppermost Triassic in age. Uh, so this is one of the, you know, non-marine deposits that occurs widely in southern and southeastern Utah. You can see some, you know, kind of cross bedding, especially over there in the shadow. Um, massive cross bedding, at, kind of on a, you know, somewhat sharp of an angle. This is all rock that was deposited in a massive uh, ancient dune field, a um, field of uh, sand dunes that stretched from, well, there's some, some more good stuff over here. Uh, it stretched from, uh, you know, south, southwestern Wyoming all the way down to um, around this area and then a little bit farther south, maybe down by Mesquite, Nevada. That was the extent of this dune field. And up in Wyoming, uh, it's called the Nugget Formation. Well, up there, the base of the Nugget Formation, which is kind of almost synonymous with the Navajo Sandstone, the base of the Nugget Formation is uh, shows a lot more, you know, deposits that were laid down maybe in shallow ponds or, or uh, rivers. And the base of the Navajo down here is all uh, Eolian, so wind-deposited stuff. And I'm just on this... You know, kind of a little rocky ridge line meandering along my way here. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> so down here in southern Utah, the Navajo, you know, we got this nice view again right here. Uh, the Navajo that we see below us is all wind deposited and, uh, you know, massive cross bedding. Uh, the cross bedding that I'm talking about again is over here. You know, some diagonal lines going in. And the the other thing is that geologists have looked at all these layers and they think um, from the, based off of the direction of those, those bedding planes, um, you know, down here as well, they think that the wind direction was coming most likely from the northwest. Now, there's Pine Valley Mountain peeking out over there. So the northwest, the wind would have been coming from this way, and this whole area um, <clears throat> in the early, you know, the, the earlier lower Jurassic would have been a massive, massive dune field. Well, um, that was totally different from earlier in the, in the Triassic, and this whole area, you know, we don't see any Triassic rocks right here. I'm just in this outcropping of Navajo sandstone that is surrounded, I'm surrounded here by basalt uh, lava flows. Now over here, we can see clearly there's a cap of, right there, cap of columnar basalt that's kind of breaking away and eroding off of the base of this long, <clears throat> long ridge that's out here. Well, this is an arm of the Twin Peak lava flow that's really young in age. I think it's like Pleistocene in age. Now, it's one of these lo younger <clears throat> uh, lava flows that's in the St. George area. Now, the, the columnar basalt is eroding there, and it's kind of, you know, on top of the Navajo sandstone. But, you know, here at this locality, all of this is Navajo, the reddish stuff, the whitest stuff that I'm standing on, it's all Navajo. Uh, earlier, you know, below us, if we were to drill down, downwards into the earth, we would <clears throat> start hitting <clears throat> uh, some of the, <clears throat> we'd start hitting the uh, Chinle Formation and the Moenkopi Formation. The Chinle Formation is upper, 
up mid to upper Triassic, and the Moen Kopi is early Triassic, but all of that, you know, none of that stuff is exposed here. It's exposed to the south, well, southeast of us as we go towards St. George. You know, there's the big virgin anticline, more older layers. But so there was a time of dramatic change here across Utah. And it probably weren't, you know, it was almost like a Sahara desert type landscape. And this is all, you know, it, hugely extensive deposits of this Navajo sandstone, but this would have all been kind of like a flat rolling desert with a bunch of dunes in the area. Uh, none of the mountains that were here in Utah were present really at that time. Um, yeah, so the, the two primary rock layers that I'm looking at right now are again the Navajo sandstone and then this uh, Twin Peak lava flow and uh, you know, the Twin Peaks are right. Well, we can just barely see Pine Valley Mountain, which is one of you know, maybe the largest lacolith in the world. And that's um, much older than the Twin Peak lava flow. But the Twin Peaks are over this way somewhere, just kind of behind these little knolls. And all of this, they, they erupted and these big things of lava kind of flowed out uh, anyways. The power lines over there are going over one of the lava ridges. Anyways, it's just uh, great to be here in this little, <clears throat> little, uh, you know, this little pocket of knolls that are all comprised of this wonderful Navajo sandstone. 